Well, hi, and welcome to my shop. And thanks so much for joining me here. T today is June 15th, and there's a thunderstorm about to, to strike. So, uh, pretty dark outside. Now, what's going on here? So, last video ended with me being curious about the four output transformers that appear to be in this receiver that don't appear to show up on the schematic. So, still don't know what the answers are to that. Uh, but really what I want to talk about is the input here. Uh, when I attach these cords, I looked at the back of this. Look at the back too. I'm going to see two shielded wires. Here they are here. Okay, two shielded wires. So the shielded wires are carrying the, uh, let's call it a fragile weak signal. That's why they're shielded must be conveying the weak signal from the tape deck, or in my case, the uh, Bluetooth receiver, into the sensitive amplifier and then out to the speaker. So they're using shielded cable. So when I saw the shielded cable, I, okay, there's two, two uh, a left and a right channel. Now, this is a five pin connector. This is quite capable of handling uh, both the input and the output. So I looked for a similar output or another pair of shielded wires. There aren't any. There's only one set of shielded wires. So the receiver instructions do refer to using the tape deck to record. What would you be recording? You'd be recording what you're receiving on the radio. So you'd have this switched into radio mode and at that point conceivably on two of these pins is the proper level uh, output to go into a tape deck for recording. But there's only two wires. Or is there only two wires? Because there's two more I kind of missed. There's two non-shielded wires. There's a red one here you can see and there's a green one over here just like it. They come to these terminals. There's some uh, handy terminals on this plate. The terminals don't go anywhere. They're uh, Here's a, well, actually, they come out here for some reason. You could you could touch a probe here and make a measurement if you wanted. Don't know why you'd want. Same thing here. I think these are just handy dandy terminals. So they brought the green and the red wire to these terminals, and then the green wire is attached to this resistor. And the red wire is attached to this resistor. That's a third, that's, that's a orange, orange, green. So what would that be? 3.3 mega ohms, I think, offhand. And then they go into the connector. Now, thank you to the person who sent me an email, taking their, uh, add, adding some input on the, uh, input on the output transformers for me. Um, and mentioning that this this pin is capable of, of an input of, of a stereo input and stereo output at the same time four four lines five terminals one of them is obviously the ground so the ground would be the middle one and then the remaining four are inputs and outputs his suggestion is uh, the standard and I got no reason to think he's not correct is the the outside two are inputs well, I better I better be clear input to what <laughs> let me uh, let me get this straight I don't want to get this wrong let me just reread his email here briefly okay so I reread the email from Michael thank you very much uh, for the email but it's still not absolutely clear and just in the way he's worded it it's a little bit interpretable about which pin is what so the good thing is it'd be easy to test should be easy to turn on the radio. Oh, really? I, I can't do anything about the rain, Peanut. You're stuck in here. The poor guy. He loves going out. It's been beautiful the last few days. That's why I haven't been doing too much shop time. And my cats love going out, of course. And he's whining because it's it's raining outside today. Okay, so what I should be able to do is play the radio, play a station, like put it on broadcast, just have it playing out of the speakers. I should be able to find the signal in these pins. And that should tell me clearly which pins are the recording pins. 
And what I really want to know is which ones are the play pins. Those would be the other two. Hopefully I've soldered this correctly. But the, the reason I'm suspicious about this is because the level the stereo would produce from the Bluetooth receiver was lower than I expected. It was okay, but lower than I expected. Oh my gosh, really? Peanut, come on. You really want to go out there? Or are you worried because... Because... She, <laughs> out, out, he says. Really? What about it? What if I let you go in the garage? How about that? Consolation prize. You want that? Garage? See, he's turning his head and looking. It's showing that he's looking behind him. That's what I think he's doing. He's trying to indicate to me where he wants me to go. That's what I think he's doing. Is he even conscious enough to know what he's doing? See? See? Thunder. That would scare you. Okay, here's the plan. We're going to use the signal tracer to listen to the four pins here. Two of them should produce fairly good volume. Two of them may have sound on them, but it may be a lower volume. I'm going to sort out which ones I should be feeding the signal into, and hopefully I've done this correctly. We are going to find out. Let's turn this guy on. Oh my gosh, just uh, between the uh, video clips here, I was upstairs with my cat, my orange cat who you saw, trying to get the black cat, Shadow, to come in from outside. And there was a big bolt of lightning and then a clap of thunder like I haven't heard for quite a few years. And my poor orange cat practically did a backflip. He didn't know what was happening. He didn't know where to run. <laughs> so he's, he's on the edge now. But no black cat. Cat's still outside. Okay, make sure the settings over here are for audio, which they seem to be. We're on the audio setting. The ground connection from this device is this red wire, by the way, in case you're wondering. This is done. Okay, now we're going to turn this guy on. We put him on broadcast here. Okay, apply the power through the lights. Last look. Good. control knob. I have to use this crazy pair of pliers on it. Okay, let's try again. That's thunder in the background, in case you're wondering. Okay, we'll tune and get something. Too low, too low on the volume. Now chances are this signal that's taken off to go to the tape deck is done before the volume control. So, okay, there's a funny sound. Oh, I need this again. I should really put that volume knob back on, shouldn't I? Okay, we don't want to hear it through the speakers. We want to hear it through here. Okay. I'm just going to move this over a little bit. We can go right in the prongs here. Okay, I got my hand on the volume control of the uh, tracer over here. You can hear it, you can see where I've set it. Ooh, what was that? Why, 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 why so much noise there? What's happening? That's to 
be expected. Ground. Oh my gosh, what, what happened there? Looks like there's a large DC voltage here. I don't know what that was. What was that? It set my uh, tracer crazy here. Tracer went crazy. Is there some kind of voltage there? Wouldn't expect so. I don't think I can push these prongs all the way in. What's going on there? Okay, see it falling? It's falling, falling, falling. Now, see the number? 22. I take it out. Wait, 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 which pin did I have it in? Let me add it in this one. Watch it, it's more than 22 now. And going back down. This is evidence of a DC voltage leaking through a capacitor and showing up on this connector. Well, that's bad. That's very, very bad. Hmm, wow, I should have checked for this. Or am I just interpreting this completely wrong? Let's go on this one. We get the same voltage over here. Oh, it was a hundred and something here. So it's two, two capacitors, both leaking into here. Ay, ay, ay. Oh my gosh, that's a negative. Also ne a negative, negative. How do you get a negative voltage? Oh, no one. I got the leads turned around. <laughs> That's how you get a negative voltage reading there. Turn your leads around. So like a hundred volts. Oh my gosh. For sure that shouldn't be there. Oh boy. Well, what's on the end of this? Am I sticking a hundred volts into, the <laughs> into that little receiver? Ne never, just, you know, it just didn't cross my mind that this would be a concern. Let me ground with a clip lead here. The hum you're hearing is the signal tracer. It has a hum. If you're hearing a hum. Okay, what's on the end of these? Oh my gosh! Is this for real? Now that's a good question. You say, is this for real? So what's happening here is a charge is leaking, my assumption, a charge is leaking through a capacitor sufficient to drive that meter. That meter has an input impedance, probably 10 mega ohms or something like that. See it's down to 23 volts and it stops there. That means the charge leakage rate is sufficiently high to place a potential of 24 volts under this circuit arrangement, which, which is the meter. The meter is the circuit. I take it off. Charge continues to build up in the capacitor, and now we bleed it off with the meter. 74. Ooh la wee! Oh my gosh. Hey, wait a minute. Let's keep going now. Is that, is that from this green and red wire here that we were looking at earlier? Is that the... I should write a book on radio repair. The title would be Unexpected Results. <laughs> That's, that would be the title. There's nothing here. Nothing here. Now, are these the two inputs to this? Is this where the output of the Bluetooth would feed input into the green and red wire? So I'm going to turn the volume up. I'm going, to, I'm going to flip this to tape. Okay, I'm going to turn the volume up. I'll kind of do the same thing, only the other way around. Okay, volume's up. Now, we should be able to hear, hear some noise when I touch these uh, inputs here. There was a little tiny pop.
So now this is quite interesting. So I have two speakers in here. I have one up that way and one up this way. And they're hooked up to the receiver in stereo. Watch, watch what happens for a bit. See, nothing is happening. <laughs> Well, okay, so it was interesting for a minute, but I guess it was just my imagination. Oh, that's what's happening. I'm shorting it out. See, there's a DC voltage building up here, which I'm shorting out, and you can hear it. That's the other channel. It sounds a little different. Voltage building up here. Okay, uh, so normally all this stuff is protected by capacitors, uh, so you don't get the DC voltages in and out of these connectors. It does not seem to be working that well. Now, if I took something of a lower impedance, something other than this high impedance meter, and attached it, such as the 50,000 ohm input or output to the uh, Bluetooth receiver, it's probably 50,000 ohms or somewhere around there, that might be enough to just bleed away this charge, result in a small DC voltage sitting there, which is of maybe of, of no consequence at all. On the other hand, it doesn't f seem good having. Oh, there's, there's no, there's no hun hundred volts here. It's ten volts. It still doesn't seem good. Ten volts there. Where did I find that big high voltage? Was here. It's only ten. But uh, oh, I pushed the button there, didn't I? Nine, ten, zero, zero. Well, these don't seem to be wired in the pattern that was described in the uh, email I received. Um, but I, I'm just, you know, unsure on every level here. Let's put the radio back on and have the feeling the volume's up. Just tuned it to a quieter spot. Now we get the voltage. So when it's on radio, the voltage appears. Complete zero on these. Now that's interesting. Zero may indicate a ground has been placed on them. Okay. I think I gotta study the schematic at length here and uh, sort out uh, how this is working. Oh, that was a bolt of lightning there. Okay, let's take a look at the schematic here. Now this is a matching copy of the schematic I have in paper. And this does appear to be as correct as it can be for this radio. I have another electronic version of the schematic it's clearly for a slightly different model or a different model it's more than slightly different i'll just stay away from that so as long as we're looking at this we're looking at the right schematic now here is the tape input right here and we can see the circuit around it something like this so let's zoom in on that a little bit How can I be sure this is the connector? Well, it has the tape symbol right here. It also has five pins, and uh, let's see how they're done. So, uh, interesting. So here, the ground is in the middle pin, and then the two next pins are dealt with this away, whatever that means, and the other two pins are dealt with that away. Okay, let's take a look here. This, this is going on a shielded wire Just the ground. Uh, doesn't make sense. No, 
goes through here. 2.2 mega ohms. Ooh, that's a biggie. I saw one I thought was 3.3. I'll bet you that's the 2.2, in fact. And what, what looks like orange to me is actually red. Uh, and, and this thing's doing the same thing. So 1 and 4 are treated in a similar way. Sure, it's quite a pattern here. guess what this is doing is it's making it mono. If you close this, you make it mono. Down here, holy smoke, so here's the output. So, so there's two preamps here. This is probably the phono input here. About, yeah, there's the phono symbol right there. Phono input goes through two preamps. The output is then fed Notice the output gets on to pin 5. This is this is one of the ones that I saw the high voltage. And look, there's a blocking capacitor from the plate of this tube. This plate's got 150 volts on it. So if this guy's leaking, he's the guy who's letting voltage build up here. Pressure, electrical pressure, charge accumulation. So uh, that would be the same thing up the other way. The other way would be here, through here, wait a minute, that's the same way. The other way would be here, through here. Oh, I'm just getting lost. Three. So the output of this one, that's the blocking capacitor. So it looks like the way this is arranged, uh, Oh, look at the pin numbering here. One, what have they done? One, two, three, four, five. That can't be the normal pin numbering, can it? See, I mean, they're making this look very pictorial here, as if, you know, that's what the back of the radio should look like. The numbering is quite different. And two, two, isn't this three? Isn't they want to ground the middle one, pin three? What are they doing? All those German engineers. <laughs> They're living in their own world. Well, that's confusing. That's certainly all confusing. So we start over again. These two appear to be handled the same way, and these two appear to be handled the same way. But if if they're in this order, but if they're not, then five is up here. Oh, this doesn't make sense at all. I, I can't because of the ground. Okay, so we'll assume that these numbers are positionally correct and they just didn't number them in order for some reason that... I, I don't know. I don't know. I hate it when I don't know these things. These little open doors to mystery, these doors that remain open to mystery, end up biting you in the rear down the road because the mystery is actually something you need to figure out. Well, you don't know it at the time. And you can't you can't figure everything out or you never get anywhere. Oh, the risk. The horror. The horror. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, the way I got the readings it did seem like two on one side were, were acting differently, didn't it? Didn't it? I don't even know now. Oh my god. My little brain can't handle five things. Too many, there's too many prongs. Um, well, let's see what we can figure out here. So looking, I'm looking at the radio. I'm looking at the ground prong that goes right to ground. The third, the one in the middle, the third one. So I'm going to look you know, uh, which way is this this diagram facing? I'm looking at the back of the radio. And I'm going to say go counterclockwise from the ground. That would land me on pin 3 on the diagram you're looking at. And that is connected to a to two resistors. Two resistors, one that, that one, yeah, two resistors. One is sure looks like orange orange green. 
and the other one, I can't quite see here. Sorry, I'm leaving you looking at the. There's a different value. But I'd say brown, black, warm, brown, black, yellow, 100K. I'd say one's 100K and the other one is 2.2. Now, is there anything that matches up with that? So we come along, pick this one. There's 100K. And there's the 2.2. So, so that, so that would be in one, but the same, same thing is down here. So it's either pin one or pin four, but I picked an end pin would have to be pin one. So that would identify pin one. So now pin four, which is either the one next to it or way over here should be looking the same. So, okay, so I'm going to look on the radio. Come on, let's join me here. We ended up not getting very much rain. Just a little bit of rain. Okay. Okay, so the pin that I identified as number one is this one right here. This one. And on it has two resistors. One is looks like orange, orange, green, which I think is actually red, red, green. And then we have the other one, which is down here. Brown, it looks like a brown, black, yellow, 100K. So next pin over, the next pin over, I better make sure we're following this right, would be this one right here. You see the same, exactly the same arrangement. Same value resistor, same arrangement. So, 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 so these two pins are doing these two these two pins are doing something the same. These are the ones that I measured. Uh, no or low voltage on the high voltage ones. Yeah, are the ones that I way down below here, a little hard to see that I soldered my. Uh, my wires on these, these black wires are mine here. Okay, so that's how they've done it. So now we know. Now we know. Now we think we know. I think we know something here. That's a really dangerous situation to be in. Cut the red wire. <laughs> um. Uh, then what? Now what? So what? Well, okay. So so these so these two top pins have the uh, resistors on them, and then they have the green and the red wire. Green and the red wire, which which go up into all these switches up here. What what, what is that? Green and red wire. Green and red wire. Can we figure that out? Uh, so the green and the red wire are on the ends of the 22. So we go to the 22. It's a single wire here. They're showing it, you know, it's, this is a schematic, right? They don't show it the way it really is. But this goes into a switch here, and this end goes into a switch up here. Yeah. So, what, so, so what, what's happening? So this is the output of the preamp phono signal would be coming through here, but not the tape. So the tape, the tape comes later, it doesn't need the preamp. Um, so, <laughs> it's just, so on this side, it would be an output from here that's connected here. So three and I guess five would be outputs. Three and five are outputs. Then if you want to feed in a signal, you would feed it into, I have to be one and four. So it would take one, feeding it in one. Okay, we could take a wild guess that the switch is open up here. It's past the switch anyway. It's on its way. It's on its way into the amplifier. And it's past these switches. Yeah, again, so if you're on pin one, the signal is going 
onward. Now there is a capacitor here, but it's not likely blocking any significant voltage. Because all this appears to be just related to the grid, and there's a capacitor here too. Ooh. Okay, uh, what is this to? It's another amplifier. You got the preamp, a pre, you got a pre preamp or phono amp, preamp, power amp. Uh, the biasing here it looks like it's kind of self biased. Big, big resistor here. Is this capacitor is questionable? So all these blocking capacitors, I'm going to have to hunt them all down, I think, now. Because I've, I've seen direct evidence of leakage. And no surprise, either. Um, I think what, you know, the, the other part of the story is, what about all those old capacitors? I, I think they all got to go. That's a lot of work. Now, so getting back to the other question, am I hooked? Did I hook up the inputs to the right place? So where have I hooked them up? I've hooked them up on pins. What would be pins? Uh, if I numbered them in order, it'd be four and five. If I numbered them in order, and I figured out that it would be one, two. It'd be four and five. It'd be these two pins. So I'm pumping a signal in here. I'm on the wrong side. I should be pumping it into one, in, in, into these two. But these, the, aren't these the two with the big voltage? I'm all confused again. It's this numbering thing. Yep, I, I gotta stop and make some diagrams or something because uh, my head's just going around in circles here. Okay, after looking things over pretty thoroughly, it would look like I've connected the uh, input for the Bluetooth to the wrong terminals. It looks like I should have them connected here. They would be then connected, uh, the, these 200 Ks, they go to ground. So it's a 100 K impedance uh, seen by these terminals. And then the signal has to get itself through a 2.2 mega ohm resistor, but this is a very high impedance circuit up here. And, um, and and that means it's going up on this green green wire. It's going up on the green wire and the red wire, non-shielded, unshielded. So my assumption was that the shielded wires are shown here. Uh, would be the signal wires to hook up to, and I did. So somehow some signal got through and came out the speakers when I ran the Bluetooth. So it took me a long time to make this, <laughs> to install this wire. Maybe I should install a second one now up on the top terminals, the two I think they should be connected to. Run the Bluetooth test and see what we get. And what about the voltage? Okay, so we got to look at the schematic. Actually, I'm going to have to go after these capacitors. That's really what has to happen. Let's look at the schematic here. Okay, so right now I am connected to... Uh, wow, what a turnaround this is. I'm connected. The, the Bluetooth is connected to this connection and to number three here. Both of them have a plate voltage sitting on the other side of a blocking capacitor. And both of them show a charge showing up indicating these capacitors are leaky. These two. If these two are leaky, you know, I could just go ahead and assume that every capacitor that's in a blocking, has a blocking job to do, is probably leaking enough that it's not doing its job right. I suggest changing out all these capacitors again. Um, so I really, it's really unwise for me to hook up the Bluetooth uh, correctly, or what I think now is correctly, because it's going to face this uh, leak through here uh, and fry the little Bluetooth receiver up. i got, I got to find these, change them at the very least, uh, to get rid of that voltage. 144 and C44. You see what they've done here is they, they've numbered all the components here, 
like for instance C46, the same capacitor on the other channel is C146. That's what they've done here. Can we find it quickly? Maybe. C146. So, wow, now getting at these. Okay, that's the new challenge. New challenge is find these capacitors and get rid of them. Wow, such a puzzle. So I would think or hope that the tube whose plate is being plate voltage is being blocked from this connector is, is this tube, but it's not. It's it's this one way over here. According to what I'm looking at. So the capacitors involved could be anywhere between here and here. There's two of those capacitors sitting up here, two of them. They're the correct size. Maybe these are them. These are the blocking capacitors here, maybe. Um, I'm pretty much reaching the point where the only way forward with this receiver is just start replacing capacitors like for like everywhere I see them and just get rid of all all these uh, all these older kind like this. Get rid of them all. Bite the bullet and do them all. There's a pile underneath also. And hopefully along the way I will replace the two that are causing this uh, voltage leak onto here and probably solve all kinds of other subtle things that are going on in this radio. There's probably other grids that are being pushed. Their, their voltage is being pushed around by leaks. Okay, I, I pretty much that's where I've got to. Trying to relate this, you know, A component to a spot on the uh, schematic is extremely difficult in this radio. Okay, so I'm going to stop and think about that a bit. And, and think about it. Right. Okay, so I figured out something here. Um, this phono input, uh, it shows three uh, terminals, but the plug on the receiver actually has five terminals. It's the same as this, this kind of plug. It's five terminals, um, but look, Look how they're numbered here. Three terminals, one, two, three. Now, if we look over here, you see one, two, three. And two more extra terminals are four and five. That must be how this got numbered. So they're always showing the terminal to the left at the end is number one. You have to rotate this left at the end, number one two in the middle, three on the other side, one, two in the middle, three on the other side. So that's, that's what's going. That's why they've numbered them this way. So it's not that these are shown out of order. They're shown as they are physically and they just use a curious numbering system. And I'm sure in, in, in the end it's to prevent confusion. <laughs> it's kind of a funny thing, isn't it? So now I'm going to go after trying to find these capacitors off the plate of the ECC83 tube. Um, th this isn't adding up correctly. This is not correct, is it? So, so the, this, this tube, the 83, is the phono amp. Not involved with the tape. The tape goes in here and the signal, as I think I have figured it out, is coming out of 1 and 4, working its way through a big resistor and then on its way to, uh, to here. Right. So the capacitor that's causing the voltages to rise over here is this guy. Okay, going down the same road again and again here. So this is off of pin 6, and the other one is off of pin 1. So pin 1 and pin 6 should have a capacitor connected to it. Point zero zero two. Zero 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 two two rather. Okay. Um, so the capacitor I can see must be this one. It is a 0.01. This one's hidden underneath. Or 
these two. Okay, let's go underneath. Okay, 2.022 capacitors. Well, there's only two capacitors. There's only this one and this one. This is on pin number one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Eight. But it was it was one in six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh look, that's where this capacitor is actually connected. There's a black lead coming down to here. So it's these two guys. Now, what is their size? 0.022. Bingo. Okay. So I'll, I'll change these two. This should get rid of the voltage up here. Okay, those don't look too tough to do. Good. Finally. Okay, cut the leads on this one here. It's been installed in a bit of a peculiar position. This is not the easiest place to, to have it. Here we are. 0.02. We're going to put them right on the tester. You know what? I can get the other one out of there too. Why don't I do that right now? So, what I'm doing is I'm putting a clip lead on the terminals that the capacitor runs between. So when I cut it out of there, my mind, if it goes blank, won't matter. Okay, we got them both out now. Let's see, let's give it, let's give it the test. The test. This showing up not leaking. Wow, really low. I mean, really low. We have evidence of these leak. Okay, so here we go. Having built up a little bit there, let me just see if I can't uh, improve the way this looks. It's worse that way. Let's try this. Let's see what my camera does with it. Just varying the general light level in my shop to try, try to make the pie show up. But Okay, good enough. There we go. What does it do? 50 volts. Oh my gosh, it opened right up. Oh my gosh. 150. Wow. Okay, so this is testing pretty good. Doesn't mean it's good enough. It is leaky. It's not as leaky as I expected. Let's try his brother here. I got the wrong capacitors. I don't think so. Okay, 50 volts again. Just knock that down, why not? Here we go. Oh my gosh. 150. Wow. So is the, these are pretty good. <laughs> I hate to say that. Pretty good, but you know, are they good enough? That's why I do these tests. I do these tests, so and then I'll, I'll look at the result of putting in two new capacitors, and we'll, we'll see if if I got it right. They're the right size, the right position, the right pin. They gotta be the right. They gotta be the right capacitors. Okay, I'm gonna install two new guys in there. Okay, two new capacitors installed here. The idea is. These capacitors won't leak. There'll be no voltage appearing on on here. We still haven't really dealt with the issue of that I connect these to the right place. We're going to get there in a minute, I think. Okay, let me uh, lay this down properly. Yes. Okay. Here we 
we go. We're still on the broadcast band. Okay, watching the dim lights after making a change. Very unlikely that what I did there would cause a, uh, a short circuit in the radio. Okay, now we're going to go looking for voltage. I wasn't able to just stick it right in like that. Okay, now that was quite interesting. Let me do this again. Take it out. And we're going to put it in. Nothing showed up. Okay. Let's spin over. Watch carefully. 40 down to zero. So what this is telling me is A, the meter falls to zero, which means the charge that's building up on this terminal is being completely dissipated just by the voltmeter itself. It's pulling it right down to nothing. Last time around it could pull it down to I think a 23 reading here because there was so much charge leaking through the capacitor. There still seems to be charge leaking through. It must be that what we're testing is essentially an open circuit. And uh, as soon as every capacitor leaks to some degree, and I guess in this case, the ones I put on there are leaking enough. Here we go. There's next to nothing there. Next to nothing there. Okay, let's check the rest of these. Zero. They always were zero, I think. Am I doing anything wrong with the meter? 60 volt setting? No. Okay, so I think that did solve the voltage problem here. The tiny charge that's building up, as soon as you hook up anything to it, that charge will be gone. There'll be no voltage there. No pressure left. Okay. Um, now the real task. Which is the real input here? Uh, let's, let's, let's do this. We're going to flip over to tape. So we are now listening to the input. And I'm going to touch... Just take this off here. Touch the different pins here. We'll see who makes a sound. Nobody. Okay, so I'm going to inject some noise. I'm just being extra careful here. I don't, I don't want to stick my finger in there just yet. Nothing. 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 Could be the volume's too low. Did I push the wrong button? No. Push the right button. Let's turn the volume up a bit. I made a mistake with the capacitors and the whole thing's dead. So, let's just turn up the volume here. Okay, it's a little louder now. What I'm hoping we would hear is the hum from me. Okay, let's try this again. old guys. <laughs> you might think there's one thing wrong with them. There could be lots of things wrong with them. Okay, here we go around again just to make sure. Okay, I can hear that on this channel. Look at this way. And I hear it over there. It sounds a little different though. But two lower ones appear to be the input. That's where I've attached these. It's just not really amplifying strong. One is a low hum, the other one has a uh, harmonic, higher harmonic in it. They're not the same. 
that old voltage out here too. Yeah, I want to make sure, make absolutely sure. So somehow I plugged this into the uh, into a Bluetooth receiver and it didn't blow up. So some kind of protection in the Bluetooth receiver itself, like a capacitor. That could easily be the case. I see nothing on the meter. Nothing whatsoever. Bluetooth testing time. Let's hook up the Bluetooth and check it out again. Here's an interesting little observation. So this is operating. You go to plug in the Bluetooth. No hum. Okay, once it's all the way plugged in, there's no hum. But here's the point. Hear what that sounds like? Must be my speakers. They do not sound the same. <laughs> Sounds like this one has a tweeter, and this one doesn't. So it's important to know this stuff because you're going to end up judging the quality of sound from channel to channel, and you got to be careful that it's you're not you know it's the stuff in your shop that's really causing the effects. Okay, so I'm going to carry on here and get that Bluetooth going. Obviously there's quite a difference in the channel here. Holy smokes. It's possible it's from some control setting on the front, some balance thing. Oh my gosh, that's really quite surprising. So so I'm gonna gonna feed the sig if I feed the signal coming out of here into the red channel, it's the same either way. If I feed it into the white channel, we get that. It's clearly something going on in here. Yeah, but it really sounds like a bad capacitor doing that. Yeah, but where? So, uh, a few things to check here. The control settings on the front of the radio are a little hard to see. Just in case there's... Okay, so that's, that's the treble control. This is the bass control. Certainly hear the bass being boosted. Zero treble coming through. Zero treble coming through. Maybe I better check over here. These connections here. Let's do that. So I'm going to switch the speakers from one side to the other here. Let me put both channels in. So you should be hearing this in stereo. I'm using a stereo microphone. Okay, so we're going to switch now. So now I hear out of the same speaker more trouble. And that's what's coming out of this one. That was the muffle. So it's clearly the output from here that's muffled. Wow, okay, so that's a, that's quite a challenge in itself. The muffling could be happening almost anywhere in here with the uh, wonderful German tone controls. <laughs> They're going to become front and center at some point. Yeah, the muffle is up, is up this way. Um, are there some, there are any tone, yeah, there are tone push buttons. Let's just check that out because these switches are unreliable. I can 
hear a change, but continue to be muffled up here. In fact, let me take out. Uh, it's the white channel that's muffled. Listen to the muffled. There we go. More muffled. No, I, I couldn't argue it's a switch. Okay, let's. Uh, Work the uh, tape switch. No change is happening. Switch over to that's the off button. I'm going to switch to AM radio here. And see if we can pick up this difference between channels. I'm going to turn it down a bit because I think it's going to be loud. Okay. Yeah. Lots of trouble in the sound. To me it sounds balanced, so we're going to take off one speaker. So the speaker I just connected is the one that was muffled. That leaves the other one non-muffled. Now we'll put this one back on. We'll take this one off. There's no muffling. Okay, so we know that the muffling is happening with the input from the Bluetooth. The tape input is muffled. Okay, well that's it for today. <laughs> One small step forward. Actually, quite an important step. Uh, shame on me for not looking for voltage before I plug something in. I mean, that's basically something you should always be doing. Is all, even if you are sure there's no voltage. Even if, yeah, my meter agrees. Of course, that's the guy who's going to help look for the voltage. So he's all excited about that idea. Always be checking. A, B, C. Always be checking. Okay, so uh, I'll think about this uh, the rest of today, and tomorrow morning I'll either go after this imbalance, which is probably worth doing. The Bluetooth, blue, Bluetooth input is very important, of course. It's very, very important. So I'll go after that. Pretty sure that's what I'll do. Goodness knows how I'm going to do that. So thanks a lot for watching, and... Uh, the rainy day is over and the sun is shining outside, so guess where I'm going. See ya!